Hi guys. So today I would like to start my discussion on uh, change of measure. Uh, we've already discussed change of measure when we were talking about finite probability space and then we again discussed change of measure uh, in the context of uh, uncountably and finite probability space. Uh, that discussion actually happened a while back so today what I would like to do is I would like to start with a quick review and then we can proceed further okay so if you remember when you we were talking about finite probability space we defined radon nicotine derivative as z of omega this was equal to p tilde of omega by p of omega okay so there were two probability measures one was the actual probability measure which was given by p and the other one is risk neutral probability measure given by p tilde okay and we said radon nicotine derivative is p tilde divided by p and this basically is called radon nicotine derivative of p tilde with respect to p okay since these are probabilities and they are all probabilities are positive the first thing that we notice is z of omega basically is greater than zero or it's a positive uh, it's a positive number okay and secondly, we also saw um, that expected value under the actual probability measure of our radon nicotine derivative is equal to 1. Okay, it's very easy to actually prove that. I'm not going to prove it. I've already done that uh, in the previous lecture, so you can refer to that. Okay. And if we define radon nicotine derivative like this, then we said that we could calculate expectation of a random variable x under the risk neutral measure and this is given by expected value under the actual probability measure of z times x okay so this was the relationship between expected value of a random variable x under the risk neutral measure versus expected value under the actual probability measure okay so this basically was the theory that we actually talked about when we were discussing uh, finite probability space. Then when we moved to uh, uncountably infinite probability space, we said that we cannot really define radon nicotine derivative like this because for uncountably infinite uh, probability space, these two probabilities for a particular outcome are always zero. Okay, so probability for a particular outcome is zero. Hence, in case of uncountably infinite sample space, we cannot define radon nicotine derivative like this. Okay, so what we did then was we basically rearranged the terms. We said, okay, p tilde of omega is given by z of omega times p of omega. Okay, this still doesn't really give us the relationship between p tilde and p because both of these for a particular outcome is equal to zero, okay? So no matter what the value of z is, you know, left, left side, left hand side will always be zero and right hand side will always be zero. It doesn't really give us a relationship between the two, but it gives us some intuition, okay? Since z of omega is a positive, uh, uh, it's basically a positive random variable, if z of omega was greater than one, if z of omega was greater than 1, then p tilde of omega would be greater than p of omega, okay? And if z of omega was less than 1, then p tilde of omega would be less than p of omega. Or in other words, what the z of omega basically is trying to do is, it's trying to redistribute probabilities across various outcomes, okay? When z of omega is uh, greater than 1, then probability of that particular path under the risk neutral measure would be greater than that under the actual probability measure. And when z is less than 1, then the probability of that particular path under the risk neutral measure would be less than probability under the actual probability measure. So what z basically in turn is radon nicotine derivative, what it's trying to do is it basically is redistributing probabilities across various paths. Okay, but since in case of uncountably infinite probability space, probability of a single path is basically zero, okay? We need to redistribute probabilities not at a path level, we need to redistribute probabilities at a set level, 
okay so then we said that okay if we have a probability space given by our sample space of sigma algebra okay and let's say there was a probability measure p and let's consider a set that belongs to our sigma algebra okay then we said okay let's define a random variable z which basically is probability that z is positive is almost surely equal to 1 okay so z is a positive random variable expected value under the actual probability measure of z is equal to 1 okay and then we said okay we're going to actually define probabilities at a set level and by using this formula we said okay let's basically define a probability um, or, or a function that assigns for each set in our sigma algebra a number given by this formula for all belonging to our sigma algebra okay so we then define these three um, properties we said okay the random variable z is basically uh, almost surely positive expected value of z under the actual probability measure is equal to one and now we're gonna assign probabilities to various sets using this formula okay so instead of assigning probabilities pathwise we basically are assigning probabilities set wise okay where a is basically a set in our sigma algebra f okay and then we said that okay if we have a random variable that basically satisfies these properties and we assign probability according to this formula then this p tilde this function that we had defined is actually a probability measure okay and if it's a probability measure then we can actually calculate expected value of random variable under two different measures under the risk neutral measure and the actual probability measure and they are related using the same equation okay okay guys so when we were discussing um, change of measure under uncountably infinite sample space that time we basically said that we have a probability space given by capital omega a sigma algebra and a probability measure p okay and that time we said under this probability measure p let's define a random variable x which is a standard normal random variable because it's a standard normal random variable expected value of x is going to be equal to zero and variance of x is going to be equal to one okay then i define another random variable y which was equal to x plus some constant theta okay so under this probability measure if you want were to take the expected value of y e of y then would be expected value of x which is zero plus theta so which is theta and variance of y would be equal to one okay so under this probability measure p x is standard normal uh, random variable but y because the expected value of y is theta it's not a standard normal random variable okay and what we want to do was you basically wanted to make this a standard normal random variable by changing the probability measure okay so we're not going to change the random variable itself the random variable will stay y equals x plus theta but we'll actually change the we'll come up with a equivalent probability measure and under that probability measure this random variable is going to be distributed standard normal okay and the way we did that was we basically defined a random redon nicotine derivative z of omega as minus theta x of omega minus half theta square okay we said if this is a redon nicotine derivative okay and we create a probability measure such that probability uh, measure gives each set in our sigma algebra probabilities given by this formula okay if this basically is the redon nicotine derivative and we assign probability under the new measures using this particular formula then i said that this random variable y is basically going to be a standard normal random variable and I've, I've already proved that before but let me actually quickly 
um, review that proof again right here. So let's assume that we basically have a set A. Set A is set of all omega such that y of omega is less than or equal to some constant b. Okay? And let's say we want to figure out the probability of this set under the risk neutral measure. So probability of this set under the risk neutral measure would be given by this formula right here. Instead of A, I'm going to write this set. This set is nothing but y of omega less than or equal to b. Right? And z of omega is given right here. It's exponent of minus theta x of omega minus half theta square dp of omega okay now here the integral is basically happening over this set and i can basically integrate this over the entire sample space and if i do that i need to multiply this with the indicator function indicator function y is less than or equal to b okay so this indicator function basically takes a value one when y is less than or equal to b, y of omega is less than or equal to b, an indicator would take a value of 0 if this condition is not satisfied. So it's a very simple indicator function. Okay, and because I'm multiplying the indicator function here, now I can take integral over the entire sample space. Okay, and then I'm going to write this again right here minus theta x of omega minus half theta square dp of omega okay so this basically it, you know if you if you remember our our discussion on um if you wanted to calculate expected value of a function of a random variable x is basically a random variable which is a standard normal random variable and this basically is a function of a standard normal random variable so in other words we basically are trying to compute what are the expected value of this function and if you remember from our discussion previously, this basically integral can be written as, this expected value can be written as, we can integrate from minus infinity to infinity. We have an indicator function. Now instead of y, I'm gonna write x plus theta. So this would become s then equal to b minus theta. Okay, this is basically the indicator function. And now I'm going to write this exponent here, minus theta x minus half theta square. And in order to compute the expectation, we need to actually multiply it by the density function. And density function of x, which is a standard normal random variable, is given by 1 by square root of 2 pi exponent of minus half x square dx. Okay, so we need to compute this expectation, oh, sorry, this integral. And since this is going from minus infinity to infinity, and this indicator function basically is going to be zero when x is greater than b minus uh, theta, we can write this integral going from minus infinity to b minus theta. Okay, so that integral basically gets taken care of here. Now we are left with this term. I can take 1 by square root of 2 pi outside the integral and I can combine these exponential terms. So I'll get exponent of minus theta x minus half theta square minus half x square dx, right? This in turn would become 1 by square root of 2 pi minus infinity to b minus theta exponent and I can this basically simplifies to minus half x plus theta square dx okay now I can do a simple substitution here I can say x plus theta is equal to z if that's the case then dx basically becomes dz okay I'm doing a change of variable so this will this integral will in turn become 1 by square root of 2 pi minus theta when x is b minus theta z would be b right if instead of uh, x we substitute b minus theta 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 would cancel out we'll get b so z goes from minus infinity to b exponent of minus half theta plus x is z z square dz right and this basically is probability that y of omega less than or equal to b, 
right, is given by this. Now this we recognize what this is, right? This basically is the density of a standard normal random variable, okay? And we basically wanted to come figure out the cumulative uh, probability and it's given by, and we see that basically we are integrating a standard normal uh, density right here. This basically shows that y basically is a standard normal random variable, okay? So it was a simple proof. So again, basically very important what we've done, we basically had defined a new random variable y, which was x plus theta. And we said that under this probability measure, this y was not a standard normal random variable because it had an expectation theta. Then we defined a radon Nicodem derivative by this formula right here. And then we defined probabilities according to this formula. And then we said that under this probability measure, this, ra this random variable y would basically be a standard normal random variable. And to show that, basically I figured out what the probability of y less than or equal to b is, and I actually computed the whole thing. And we, at the end, we got density of a standard normal variable, random variable, okay, which showed that y basically under this probability measure is basically a standard normal random variable, okay? The two quick things, this, this basically is just a review of what we've actually discussed in the past. And now let's move forward with new discussion on um, change of measure.